Rob? It's very challenging. What do you think? It's good stuff? Great stuff. I want to get more from you. You uh, have such a big role in this. Just trying to, you know, hook up with these guys and, you know, make it happen. But, uh, I mean, you know, the main thing that that I took from it is just just the way he happens to use the harmony. I mean, it's so, as like I said before, as a, as a bass player, I mean, you really, I was actually talking to somebody about this on the phone because they were asking me what it was like and how, how it was going, and it's just, you can't get, you, you, it's, you have to be really thinking all the time and, and thinking about what's coming up because, I mean, we all play and we just kind of like, I don't want to call it autopilot because that's not really an accurate description, but you can just kind of do things that you know how to do. Trends you know? and patterns. Yeah, yeah. but you can't, you can't ever really do that. So just the, 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 the idea of trying to navigate through the material was just really challenging, you know, and trying to find melodies in, in, in those harmonies, you know, was, was really challenging, you know, either soloing or just like walking bass lines or, you know, playing any, any patterns on the various, various fields, you know. Was it the tune that you doubled the melody with? George. George. Uh, on George? Yeah. Is that something that, was that done originally that way? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was yeah. Mraz. Mraz. George Mraz. George Mraz. Mraz. Oh, okay. I mean, the tunes absolutely work on their own terms, but I think what we're trying to say is that you know, it's not like a lot of jazz tunes that are based on the chord changes to a, a Gershwin tune. It's like, oh yeah, this it's familiar fine. terrain. Yeah, yes. or you, even yeah. how standards, all many different standards by different composers, go to the same places. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, <clears throat> I yeah, can, it's kind of a predictability. Right, and, and once there's you, no and predictability in this music right. at all. Exactly. I mean, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's really the beauty. Cool. That's the beauty of it. Is just like the idea of taking this this language, this very familiar language, and actually like, you know, being somebody who could carve a unique piece out of it for himself, you know, because I mean, there are many great composers and jazz players, you know, but, but they still write within, you know, within the framework of, of what everybody is used to, and, and he definitely, you know, made, made a, a great effort to to, expand. Yeah, expand it. And, and also, I, I imagine, you know, just to f so he could force himself to do other things, you mm -hmm. know, as well. Right. It's like, because when you, when you change the framework, you're also changing, you know, what you have to do in order to fit, fit inside it. I think that's also a reflection of where he grew up. Because, I mean, if you look at Detroit in general, if you look at Thad, Thad Jones wrote tunes like that, yeah. too, where yeah. there was no predictability. I right. mean, they were really quirky. And really um, personal stylistic approaches to writing music, you know. So I think that Thad probably had some kind of a influence on him. Yeah, there's in a lot some of some way in terms of you know harmonically and you know keeping the surprises in the tune. Yeah, yeah, a lot of very hip rhythmic variety too, yeah. not cliched. No cliches at, at all in this music. In, in Rhythmically, yeah, yeah, in the heads, and yeah. a lot of the melodies utilize. <clears throat> um, a lot of variety, you know, just in terms, technically speaking, in terms of eighth notes, triplets, there's a lot of color and contour, uh, a lot of rhythmic contour in mm -hmm. his melodies. And a lot of that, I guess, you know, maybe comes from Bird, pretty much, and I know there was a, of course, he's a huge influence on everybody, but it seems like a lot of the guys in the Detroit scene have that distinctive touch and feel and approach rhythmically, Barry Harris, Tommy Flanagan, it's a bit of a lighter, you know, kind of way of phrasing. Kind of, I don't know how to re accurately describe it, but there's a feeling about it that's um, not, you know, very like um, what's the word like real metronomic. hard hard metronomic eighth note kind of thing. It's not like that. It really flows. You know, it's like ribbons in and out. Graceful. More contours. Yeah. John Mosco um, was commenting, on, he, he played trombone on the third day, he's talking about the fact that in some of the ballads there aren't climaxes. Couldn't really clim have so, uh, climaxes in the solos because the changes didn't have kind of, uh, you know, 
a not, place where there's a climax. The mm -hmm. traditional arc, yeah. yeah, yeah more, what's, what's that about? More you meandering that almost. Did you see that in the tunes that you did in any way? Or do you know what he's talking about? Yeah, um, in the natural spot in Nine Million Tunes, <laughs> it sort of tells you where... There's a peak. Where the yeah. peak happens, but yeah, Pepper doesn't really get there until an unexpected spot, so you have to be ready for that. You know? I mean, another thing that's really interesting in this music is his choice of notes in the melody. I mean, he uses a lot of altered notes, and mm -hmm. they're not what your typical chord tone notes in the melody. It's more like what he would have played on a solo. Yeah. yeah. It sounds so. Yeah, he kind of, there's definitely a, a correlation <coughs> between the way he plays and the way he writes. <coughs> you can't separate the two mm -hmm. at all. Do you think he wrote his tunes to, to set up his improvisations? I mean, were they... Well, really I mean, I think he wrote tunes that he that wanted to play on, on, that he liked to play on. You know, you kind of... He, you know, he, he wrote like he played. Right? Yeah, it seems like a real high degree of artistic merit. Like what he wrote, he he wrote because he wanted to play it, and it's not really like taken into consideration to many other people. Like, yeah. you know the ability of those. I mean, it's a tall wasn't order. trying to write a hit tune. Yeah, it's a tall order mm -hmm. to play play music of that. And his music is hard. I mean, you, you have yeah. to be able to deal to play his music. Yeah. I mean, you can't like you know his music is really challenging. You know, Especially it if you're hungry. Requires a lot of studying. Especially what? <laughs> if you're hungry. Especially if you're hungry. Are we in a Christopher okay. Guest movie now? Is that now? subtle? Yes. Yeah, this is a spinal tap. Best in show? <laughs> Pe Best in session? <laughs> pepper tap. <laughs> the less than mighty wind? Waiting for pepper. Yeah, waiting for pepper. <laughs> waiting <go>. for pepper. <laughs> <laughs> we want to thank, thank you all for coming. Drive <laughs> <laughs> home safely now. Tip your waitress. Right. Don't smoke in bed. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, good luck with your music. <laughs>